Good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, so we're here with food scientist uh, Icky Sarif, um, who is intimately familiar with the food on the International Space Station. So in honor of Thanksgiving, we're speaking with her about uh, everything that the astronauts eat and want to eat up in space. Um, so hi, Vicki, how are you? Um, I'm very well, thank you very much. <laughs> Great. Um, so you have been involved with NASA Food Science for a while. Um, do you mind telling me about a little bit about how food on the space station and in space has changed through the years? Yes, uh, I've been working with space food about 28 years. I came here early in the shuttle program. And um, mainly uh, our preservation methods that we've used over the years haven't changed all that much. But the variety has, uh, has, grown, up, has grown a bunch over that time because we've gone from short duration shuttle flights to six month stays on the International Space Station. So the v amount of variety that we have to provide uh, for a six month stay is much greater than for a week or two on, on the shuttle. And so we now have about 200 different uh, foods and beverages that are part of our uh, baseline food system for the International Space Station. Um, included in those are a variety of the traditional type Thanksgiving items. For instance, we have uh, sliced turkey um, that is thermostabilized. It's in a pouch, so they warm it up and cut the pouch open and eat out of the pouch um, with a fork. Uh, we also have some of the traditional side dishes. We have cornbread dressing, freeze dried. They add hot water on orbit. We have mashed potatoes. Uh, no gravy, unfortunately. Uh, we do have green beans and mushrooms. Um, we have cherry blueberry cobbler. We have yams. So we have many of the uh, what's considered traditional American items for Thanksgiving. Wow. And of those 200 meals in that variety that, that you're able to, to send up to the station now, um, is what kinds of foods have, have you added to that list? What, how, how have you decided what kind of variety to put into their meals? Well, um, the team in the food lab that works on our product development, we basically uh, look at the food list and we say, uh, where do we have items? Um, you know, what are we missing that people might really like? Uh, I can remember one particular conversation uh, this has been quite a few years ago now, but uh, at the time, the only desserts that we had were like commercial cookies and crackers, so we had no desserts that could be warmed up. And one of the discussions we had was that uh, from a psychological point of view, it would be really great for our crew members to have uh, a warm dessert if they so desired to do so. And so at that point, uh, we started developing uh, some thermostabilized pouched products. Uh, we have a couple of different cobblers now, uh, cherry blueberry. We, um, we have a cran apple dessert. We have a chocolate pudding cake, all of which can be warmed up. Um, so that was just one of the gaps that we identified in our food list. Um, so we kind of try to look at at it from a nutritional perspective, but also from a psychological perspective as well, because the psychology of the food system, especially for our long duration crew members, is very important. Right, and I, I've heard some astronauts talk about how food doesn't necessarily taste as good in space, maybe because of the fluid distribution in the body or for some other factor. So I'm wondering if that plays into how you actually prepare the food on Earth before sending it into, into space. Well, it does in certain products. We do have some products that we add a little bit of extra spice to, but we also have a lot of condiments available. And uh, early on, the fluid shift does contribute to their, in a, their um, inability to taste the food as well. But then in orbit, it's also related to the fact that they're not getting as much odor from the food as you would down here, because they're eating out of packages rather than off a plate. Um, on orbit, they're in a closed environment with a lot of other competing odors. And um, also on orbit, when you have hot food, 
all of the heat isn't necessarily ri uh, rising to your nose. It dissipates, it can dissipate in other directions in microgravity. So all of that taken together, it's not surprising that they report that they feel like their taste buds are somewhat dull because they're just not getting as much aroma from the food. And that's such a huge contributor to the, t the perceived taste uh, of food for us. And is there something that the astronauts always ask for? <laughs> well, uh, I guess, you know, historically one of our most popular items has been our freeze-dried shrimp cocktail. It has horseradish in it, so it has a nice little kick, so it's quite popular. But uh, I can tell you uh, tortillas uh, are our most stable bread item, um, and they're the most popular We've been flying tortillas since the mid-80s on shuttles and now on space station, and we never can seem to get quite enough tortillas up there uh, to satisfy the crew. Um, they are <laughs> use these things to, they slap stuff in them and roll them up, and it's like making a sandwich without having to deal with two pieces of bread and all the crumbs that the bread would create. Oh. Um. And on sort of the flip side of that, are there certain foods that you just can't eat in space that, that you aren't able to send up even if they are asked for? Well, um, the main problem, the main challenge that we have is that we have no dedicated refrigerators and freezers for food. And so uh, if they want something that requires refrigeration or requires freezing, uh, we're really not able to provide that. Uh, we've had a few opportunities where there have been uh, like on the shuttle when we would have an empty freezer going up to bring back uh, medical samples from the space station. Uh, we've been able to send uh, ice cream, frozen ice cream in that freezer. Um, they would have to eat it pretty much immediately after the shuttle docked uh, because they needed then to fill that freezer with uh, medical supplies. but. Um, so there have been a few opportunities when we've been able to send ice cream, but those have been uh, very rare, and uh, they're very much appreciated when they do occur, though. Yeah, and um, it, when you are making a safe meal, are there key nutritional ingredients that you need to be sure are in there? Well, basically, uh, we are fall following the same basic dietary requirements that you and I have uh, for on the ground. There are a few exceptions to that. Um, we try to, um, they don't need quite as much iron on orbit as we need on the ground because they're not turning over red blood cells as often. And there's a few other minor differences, but basically they see, need the same nutrition that we do uh, here on the ground. Great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you chatting with me. You're welcome. And, and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you.